Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you search Google for guides to building a future-proof PC, you'll come across plenty of recent articles as well as some from years back. Personally, I don't really believe in the idea. Thinking about what your PC could play five years down the line instead of thinking about how well it can handle games today. But I found the whole concept interesting and after seeing an article from early 2012 that talked about a $1,200 PC that would last for a few years, it made me think just how well this future-proof intended PC would actually hold up today. So what we've done here is taken our usual case that some of you may recognise and rebuilt a $1,200 PC as it would have been a few years ago inside it. Despite the expensive original cost, we put this together for £283, or just under $350 at the time of this video. Now this may have been achievable for even less money, but we wanted to stick as close to the original specs as possible, which include an Intel i5 2500K, MSI P67A GD53 motherboard, 4GB of 1600MHz DDR3 RAM, a GTX 570, an Antec 650 watt power supply, SATA DVD RW, 2 terabytes of storage and a 64 gigabyte SSD. We didn't include the case, aftermarket cooler or sound card in our build, but included the cost of what they would have been back then. So let's put this to the test. Luckily our 570 supports DX11 so we're off to a good start. The 4 gigabytes of RAM may be an issue though, but let's get into The Witcher 3. We're filming the system as a whole today instead of via shadow play and fraps to ensure maximum FPS on this slightly older setup. At medium settings and 1080p, which we'll try and stick to throughout, this game hovers around 30 FPS most of the time, which is definitely a playable experience. At the time this PC was considered high-end back in 2012, it would have run most games, if not all of them, at the highest settings, so it should still do okay today. Let's move on to Battlefield 1 now, and we've set the game to run on the medium preset yet again, which at Full HD sees a return of anywhere between 30 and 40 most of the time which again is playable and would be improved by lowering the resolution a little over on GTA 5 and this setup handles it very well even on the high settings here and despite the 4 gigabytes of RAM limitation that we've got. 45 FPS seemed to be the average at 1080p, with a few stutters here and there, but overall it was a pleasant experience. The $1200 system holds up well here. Finally, we've put Fallout 4 through its paces and again chose high settings with the preset. I've mentioned before that Fallout 4 runs similar to GTA 5 on most systems, and that seems to be the case again here with about 42 frames per second. I have to say though that another 4 gigabytes of RAM wouldn't go amiss, and that would probably be the only upgrade I would suggest if you still had a system like this. The i5 2500K and 570 still seem capable, and although they could do with being upgraded soon on a system like this, the whole idea of future proof seems to have worked here, at least for almost 5 years anyway. So to conclude, yes, a $1200 5 year old system that can now be built for less than 350 has lived up to its intentions and can still run games. I wouldn't recommend buying this now though or building it as you can get newer and better hardware for cheaper, but it's nice to see that if you made that sort of investment a few years ago, you should still be having a great time with your games today. At a time when every AAA title that's released seems to be more demanding than the last, just enjoy what you've got and don't try and plan ahead. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little look back at this rather expensive system that's now actually not too badly priced. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.